Hello, it's David Clark here from DVC, and I just want to do you a short video with some tips on using Windows, which should be helpful in any program. First thing I want to look at is a very useful tool that's been in Windows for ages called the Snipping Tool, which I use all the time. It's basically a thing that lets you take a screenshot. So let's load it up. Now I'm in Windows 10, so I'm going to click on the Windows icon. You can see I've got it listed here as recently used, but I could just click on the Windows icon and start typing snip and up it pops and all you got to do is click on new and then draw a box over whatever it is that you want to take a copy of and that's it you've now got a screenshot it's not been saved or anything you've just got a simple screenshot I can save it so let's go file save as stick it somewhere and then you can go into your favorite editing program and just bring it in Stick it on the timeline, treat it like anything else. It's a very simple way of getting absolutely anything on screen turned into a picture. I don't just use it for taking, a, say, a snapshot of a website and shoving it into a tutorial. I do it for all sorts of things, like, for example, suppose I come in here and I change some settings and I move things around, and I want to remember these numbers to use on another clip, maybe in a different project. Well, all I'll do is use the snipping tool, bosh, Take a picture and then you've just got a record of those numbers you can type in somewhere else. I do find I particularly use it with things like time code. So I've got a clip on the timeline here and you can see if I select it, it tells me over here what the in time code is and the out time code is. Well, again, just take a quick snapshot and it saves me having to remember stuff or write it down. If I don't need to save it, you just shut down the snipping tool and it disappears. Pretty simple to use. The one in Windows 10 has got a few nice new things, like for example, you can stick a delay on it. Mostly you don't really need to do that. I need to do it when I'm doing screenshots of say, I want to actually do a screenshot of a menu with something hovering over it. Well, I can't do that and activate the snipping tool at the same time. So what I can do is stick a delay on it of say five seconds, click on new. And then what I do is go and highlight the menu that I want. And then after five seconds, I can take my screenshot, which is nice. You can also scribble on it if you want to, make all sorts of notes. So you know you could just take a screenshot of some time code you need to send to a colleague, scribble some stuff on it with the pen, save as a JPEG, and then email it. It's a nice, simple little tool. A lot of people don't know it's there. Another one that I use a lot for a lot is sticky notes. Sticky notes is basically post-it notes for Windows. In Windows 10, it's very simple. You just go to the Windows icon, type in stick. It's stick without the C, S-T-I-K. And then it pops up here with sticky notes, which gives you something that you can type some notes on screen. So it's just popped up. All I've got to do is type something. That's it, job done. You don't have to save it. You don't have to give it a file name. It's now a note which will sit there on your desktop. I also like to pin it to the taskbar, so I'll go down to the icon here on the taskbar and right click and say pin to taskbar, so it's there. And you know, now I've got that note sitting me and staring in the face, I want to get rid of them completely, I can just close it. But if I open sticky notes again, that's saved. So it's a very quick way of making a note that will stay there no matter what. It stays there when you turn the machine off, so you come in the next day, the notes are still staring you straight away in the face. And again, I use that to make quick and simple notes when I'm editing or doing anything inside of Windows. If you don't want it anymore, you obviously just click on the rubbish bin and it disappears. Yep, get rid of it. Job done. That is also in Windows 7. It's just a little bit harder to find. What I normally have to do in Windows 7 is go to my C drive and I actually type stick in up here. And then it'll look through the computer and find the sticky notes program, which I can then run from there. It's easier to find in Windows 10, but a nice little tool. Now I'm using Windows 10 here and Microsoft moved things about a bit. So, you know, you click on the Windows icon and then you click on that little cog and you go off to the Windows 10 settings and then you can do stuff like set up the power or whatever of the computer. If you go to personalize, you can do things like if you go to themes, you can change the icons that you have on your desktop, all sorts of stuff. But they've just changed it and put it into a, a new Windows control panel as opposed to the one that you might be used to in Windows 7. Well, you can still get at the one that used to be in Windows 7 and it's very easy. Go down to the Windows icon, right click on it and choose control panel. And then it comes up with that, which is your standard Windows 7 control panel, which does pretty much all the same stuff it used to do in Windows 7. So if you're used to it, that's how to get to that control panel 
as opposed to using the new Windows 10 one. If you change the settings either here or in the Windows 7 control panel, it does exactly the same things. It's just you can get at the old one if you want to. There is a nice tool in this control panel which I like, which is this backup and restore. Again, this has been in Windows for quite some time. It was in Windows 7 and Windows 8. You notice it actually says backup and restore brackets Windows 7. If I open that up, what this is, is a way of making an image or a backup of your computer as it is right now. So if things do go horribly wrong, you can actually get back to a working setup. If you buy a system from us, we'll have already done an image like this and we'll have hidden it in a part on your hard drive. But of course, that'll be as it was when we sent it to you. Maybe you've had it for a year or two and put several updates on it. Maybe you should make a new image. It's very simple. Just choose backup and restore Windows 7, say create system image. It will then look at your computer and work out where you might be able to put an image. So I've got a couple of hard drives in here and it says, well, you've got 250 gig free on there. That'll be fine. You just click next, leave it just doing the programs in the system. So next again and start back up and off it goes. And it's now making an image of the computer. Now, this is not something that updates or changes as you change it. This is just taking a snapshot of the computer as it is right now. Now, the benefit of this is if everything goes horribly wrong, you install lots of stuff on your machine and it's not working properly anymore, or maybe your C drive dies. Actually, with this image and a Windows disk, you can get the C drive back to how it is right now in about 20 or 30 minutes. So it's a very useful thing that's inside of Windows. And to say, we'll have one on there if you've got a system from us. That was as it was when we made it. And of course, things change. So you might want to do that from time to time. Doesn't matter if you keep it on this computer or if you stick it on an external drive. You might have noticed there was the option in there to stick it onto several DVDs or Blu-ray discs, but a typical Windows image is going to come in at about 50 or 60 gigabytes, so you probably don't want to keep feeding in lots of Blu-ray discs. I just tend to stick it on a hard drive and leave it there. I also do a backup like this before I do anything major with the computer, like uh, possibly a new version of Adobe Premiere comes along and you want to try it out. I might do a backup of this, so if the new version of Premiere isn't working properly, I can get back to where I was working quite easily. Once it's actually finished making a backup, it will prompt you to make a repair disk. I did say with this backup that you could get back to how it is right now just using a Windows disk and the image. The other option is to let it make a repair disk. I mean, there's other things this backup does, but I use it to make images. Another little thing here is a quick way of clearing up your computer and getting to the desktop. So I've got a few different windows open here. Obviously, I could shut them all down. But if you come down here to the task bar, next to this little thing with notifications on, you can see there's a sign of vertical bar. You can just about see it at the edge of the screen. Well, if I click on that, it gets me to the desktop. Doesn't matter what programs or anything else you've got open, click on that, you'll get back to the desktop. Programs are all still there, so I can bring them back up again, but that will clear it off and get it to the desktop. So if you've got your editing program open or whatever and you want to get back to the desktop, pop down, bunk, that's it. Very small thing, but once you get the hang of it, very easy to click. Another nice little hint I was recently told by one of my technical staff, Ringo, is to do with looking at a window like this. So here's a typical window which has got some video clips in, but I've also loaded these video clips up into other programs. So you can see there's an AVI file, but then together with that I've got a Peak file that Premiere's made up. I've got an EDIUS file and I've got a file Vegas has made. These are all little files which go with the clips which do things like let you see the waveforms properly. Looking at an MP4 file that I've loaded up from Premiere, you can see I've got a Peak file, I've also got this audio conform file with it. It's all lots of other files which have to be made by these editing programs, but they tend to make it so that you actually can't see anything in the flipping file list. I just want to see the AVI files, but I'm trying to pick them out here. It's actually quite hard. Here's a nice way of trimming down that list quite easily. Go to the details view and you'll notice along the top here, you have all the different types and you can click on type and it'll put it in type order. So at least all the AVI files are at the top. But what you might not know is if you go down to that little drop down there, which is next to the word type and click on it, it shows you all the types of files that you've got in this directory. And you can just tick on, say, AVI files, and it just shows you the AVI files. Tick on MOV as well, and it shows me the MOVs and the AVIs. Tick on MP4, and it will show me those. And obviously, you can just trim it down to just the MP4s. Very simple little thing. Not sure how long it's been in Windows, but it's really, really useful because you can just click on that and choose your file type. 
You can click in other places, so if I go to date, I can click on the date there and it'll actually let me choose a date or a date range. So you can see, I can say, well, let me find all the files that are between the 12th and the 18th. And it brings up all the files that have been created during that date. All I did was literally click on the first one and drag and shade in an area. It showed me all the files that are in there. And obviously there's a couple of options for showing yesterday's files or today's files. Same on size, you can choose what size of files you want, that sort of thing. You know, when it comes to video clips, the file type is the one I find the most useful because I can just show the AVI files and not show all the other gubbins that programs tend to create when you load up clips into them. Another useful little tip is to do with cleaning your disk up. So I've got a programs drive here, which is 120 gigabytes. As you can see, I've used up quite a lot of it. Still quite a bit of free space, so that's not really a problem. There have been times when I've started to run out of space. Well, there might be a lot of rubbish on there that you actually don't need. For example, when Windows 10 has a major update, like for example, we've just had the anniversary update for Windows 10, it's effectively putting on a new version of Windows. And what it does is it installs the new version and then takes the old version and puts it in a little folder called Windows.old. That takes up a bit of space. It sits there because when it does do a major update, if it all goes horribly wrong, you can actually revert back to the way you had it before and carry on using it like that. So it's a useful thing to have, but then it'll just sit there forever. And maybe you want to clean out some of your temporary files sometimes. Well, actually, there's a pretty easy way to do that, and that's to right click on the drive, go to Properties, and choose this thing, Disk Cleanup. Disk Cleanup will look at the drive and say, well, these are all the things that you could possibly get rid of. So I've got some stuff in the recycle bin, 948 megabytes of temporary files, really? Gosh, and I don't think I've been doing that much on it. But anyway, there's a lot of stuff there. I could just tick all that lot and that will get me 1.29 gigabytes worth of space. Now that's a very simple way of cleaning things up. But if you want to get rid of things like those old Windows folders from previous versions of Windows, then don't do this. Go to this one, Clean Up System Files. And it'll do a bit more analysis and it'll come up with a few more options. Of course, it takes a little bit of time, but here we are. I've now got the same stuff, but some extras as well. So, for example, if I had just upgraded my Windows, I would have about four or five gigabytes sitting here in old Windows files. Now, if you use this disk cleanup, there's no way you can restore it to the way your Windows used to be. So, obviously, you only do it when you're absolutely sure you don't need the stuff, but that's the way to get to it. Go to disk cleanup and then clean up system files, and then you can get rid of all of the temporary stuff on there that you don't really need anymore.